What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, we're going to be trying out and giving a short review of Wonder Studio by Wonder Dynamics. Wonder Studio is a visual effects software that claims to automatically animate, light, and compose CG characters into live action scenes. It's been around for about a year now, and I thought I'd give it a quick look given the recent changes in technology and artificial intelligence. Before we test it out here, I'll go ahead and explore their website here very quickly. As you can see, Wonder Studio is an AI tool that automatically animates, lights, and composes CG characters into a live action scene. And you're doing these effects in your browser and then exporting different data that you can use to kind of do your final tweaks and adjustments inside of your 3D or compositing software. So uh, this is their landing page, you know, welcome to the visual effects studio in your browser. So they try to make it, you know, fairly straightforward here. Um, you know, some pretty intense claims here, no need to work shot by shot, upload your CG character model to one shot or an entire scene and the system will automatically detect cuts and track the character throughout the sequence. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It says no need for heavy frame by frame visual effects work. So we have the system automatically detects the actor's performance based on single camera footage then takes that performance and transfers it to the CG character of your choice, automatically animated, lit, and composed. So if this works, it's gonna be a pretty big game changer for visual effects artists. And you can see Blender is here front and center. So if you use Wonder Studio, you can export that data directly into Blender and then play around with it in order to give those final adjustments. As you can see here, Wonder Studio AI automates 80 to 90% of the objective visual effects work and leaves the artist with the remaining subjective work within their own software. So pretty cool. You can see here, it says export individual elements. So you can see it's gonna give us a variety of different passes to work with. It's gonna create some motion capture data of our character. It's gonna give us a character pass, which I guess is depending on the character you select from their library or your own 3D character, it'll export that for us animated. Then we also have alpha mask, which you can see we can use that as a luma mat or an alpha mat and you know use that in our compositing process as well. We have a clean plate, which is pretty interesting. You can sort of see that it's generating the clean plate here, but actually it's you know pretty good. I have a feeling that this might be tricky for some more complex uh, video shots with different backgrounds, but pretty cool technology regardless. It's automatically going to camera tracker footage as well, which is pretty cool. Again, whenever you try to automate something without a lot of parameters for the user to adjust, it could be I will say this guys, I, I, I'm a little bit skeptical of these claims, but I also think it's really cool technology and in a few years, who knows where it'll go. But uh, yeah, you can see we have a Blender file, it's gonna give us that and then the final render. So, you know, pretty cool looking result here. It's a really, you know, crazy one-step solution. If it's gonna do that all for us, the light levels look good and everything. And uh, yeah, I think a pretty interesting technology. We're gonna test it out and see if it holds up. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna give it an easier shot to work with because this is actually the first time I've tried it myself. So I have a few different pieces of video footage here. I think we're gonna go with this one. There's a lot of good data that I feel like a computer could, you know, analyze. You know, this could be a fairly easy track for us as well instead of Blender. Uh, we might try some of these other ones later as well. Maybe I'll do another video with some more complex footage. You know, this one could be interesting as well. This one doesn't have the full character though. So I'm gonna go with this businesswoman walking here and we're gonna try to replace her with a robot. So I'll go ahead and create a new project inside of our browser here. And I've just paid for the live action easy version here. You can see they have several options to choose from as well as their AI motion capture option, which is cool. So we can actually use AI motion capture without a motion capture suit. So that's pretty cool if it works well. So we'll just try this, go ahead and continue. And right off the bat, it opens up a pretty basic little timeline here. We can upload our videos that we want to use. So I'll just drag and drop our woman into the upload video section and give it a second here. And I think it's uploaded. Let's go ahead and drag it into our timeline now. And great. So we have a pretty basic timeline, but uh, yeah, that's looking pretty cool. We'll see how it tracks her arm that's occluded by her body here. I'm just gonna do four seconds, just so it doesn't take as long to, well, I don't actually know if I can crop it here. Can I crop it? So I guess I'll end up doing the full clip. So I noticed that, you know, the interface is so simple, but there are also some things that I feel like it's missing. But uh, yeah, I guess I can't really clip this. We're just supposed to import the file as is and have it the length that we want it. Okay, no problem. Let's go ahead and click on next. Actually, no, first we need to choose the actor. So click on the scene for each clip, choose the actor that you would like to replace. Okay, so I'll go ahead and scan frame for actors. And I think it should find our actress fairly easily here. 
All right, so we found her. Great, so nice little detection there. Now we can select a character on our right window here. Expand this a little bit. I think I'm just gonna do kind of a robot or something. So I think Beastie Bot looks pretty cool. We'll actually just select that one. So I wanna select our actor here and we'll click on Beastie Bot. And now it is assigned, oops. No, this is actor one. So actor one is Beastie Bot, you can see here. And I guess, I'm assuming we can change it if we want to. Can we change it? Yes, we can change it. So we just drag whichever one we want. So we're gonna use Beastie Bot on our uh, businesswoman here. And now we'll click on next and let's see what it does. It says one actor does not have a character assigned. Okay, we don't need another actor. We'll delete this one, we had another actor there. So now we can click on next and we're going to uh, choose some of our settings here. So I'll try resolution 720 for the sake of this tutorial, we'll go with that. And then we'll use an MP4 format. Now we have a variety of different elements that we can export here. I'm going to uh, export the motion capture AI, the clean plate should be pretty cool to see what it creates for us because clean plates, as you guys probably know, are kind of tedious to recreate inside of the computer. So that'll help us quite a bit. And I guess it's not gonna do our camera track this time. So that's interesting. Um, and we'll export the blender scene. I guess you can choose Maya or Unreal. It's coming soon as well. But uh, as you guys know, we're going to use Blender on this channel. So we'll go with Blender here. Okay, so we'll do the motion capture, the clean plate. It's not gonna give us alpha map because I have to upgrade to get that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of scene this creates for us. We'll go ahead and click on start processing and let's see what we get. It says it's going to take around 69 minutes. So time for a break and we'll come back very soon. All right, guys, we are back. Let's take a look at what Wonder Studio has created for us as our rendered composite. As you can see here, the thumbnail looks pretty good already. Let's take a look. And already it's looking pretty impressive. I'll go ahead and play it here. And there we have it. That's our kind of several click solution, if you will. And yeah, already I'm pretty impressed here. You know, the reflections on our CG model look really nice too. Everything is fairly well composited. I am noticing some kind of blurry edges here. And I think that's probably from the clean plate kind of generative fill effect that they have going on here, especially down here by the feet. You can notice there's kind of a weird soft edges on the background. That needs a little bit of integration there, but for something that's so fast, I'm pretty impressed with the result. The actual CG itself, I think is a CG render, but their job of recreating the lighting is pretty nice here. And yeah, for a really streamlined workflow, I'm pretty impressed. Even uh, you know some of the movement on the hands here, like the motion capture data on the hands looks pretty interesting as well. So a lot of good stuff here. Let's take a look at our files that it's going to export for us because we are getting some issues on the clean plate, I feel like. So you can see we have a variety of different export options. You can export the video by itself if you just wanna do that. But I wanna look at the clean plate as well as the blender scene as well. Unfortunately, I didn't pay for the more advanced version where you can look at the alpha masks as well. But at least we can get an idea of what it's giving us to work with. So I'll go ahead and export this clean plate. I feel like the clean plate might be a little rough. It's something that I'm a little bit skeptical of, but let's give it a shot. I'll we'll also export our blender scene right here. And we'll go ahead and open up these zip files real quick. And for the clean plate data, it's just giving us a JPEG sequence. So I'll go ahead and open that inside of After Effects and we'll take a look at it in a little bit more detail. All right, so I'll go ahead and open up a new project inside of After Effects. Let's take a look at this clean plate data. Go to File, Import File, and we'll open up the sequence containing our clean plate. And I'll just interpret this at 24 frames per second really quick. Add this to a new composition, and let's take a look. And we're playing back a little bit slow right now, but uh, you can already see that it's done a pretty good job. However, maybe not production level quality yet. You can see it's kind of trying to interpolate from frame to frame here and use that generative fill style effect, but it's creating some issues especially on the background here and around the feet of our character. So it almost looks like, you know, it's creating an invisible character type effect and we've done that intentionally, but actually the clean plate should be a lot more clean than this. But uh, yeah, for a one click kind of solution, not bad. I think this is something that could definitely be done better in a more traditional way. But again, for saving us some time and effort, this could be something that you could use maybe for some social media videos or something that's gonna be viewed on a smaller screen where those artifacts and those issues won't be as noticeable. And so much of the video content we view nowadays is on social media anyway compared to movies. So for something like that, I could definitely see it being used more, but for a more professional production side in a movie or TV show, definitely don't think it's quite that level yet. The more traditional techniques of kind of a clone stamp tool on a 3D projection map would be a lot better for a clean plate in this scenario, but still pretty impressive. Again, pretty simple shot that we've given Wonder Studio to work with right off the bat. So take it with a grain of salt. However, maybe in the future, I'll make another video on this and give Wonder Studio some more complex shots to work with and see how it does but you know impressive but uh 
you know, you gotta know its strengths and weaknesses here and decide where you're gonna use it. Or in this case, for a TV or movie, I'd probably just start from scratch to create my own clean plate. And the problem with using this generative fill style technology on a video form is that it's not only trying to, you know, recreate that data in a realistic way for one frame, but it's also trying to make sure that from frame to frame, the data that it created in the last frame is added into the algorithm of the next one as well. So it's a really uh, tricky technology. There are some other tools that do this as well, but I haven't seen anything that completely holds up to the traditional method of creating a clean plate, but still impressive regardless. Let's take a look at our Blender file now. So I'll navigate to our folder and let's open up our Blender file and take a look. All right, so right off the bat, this is what Wonder Studio has created for us inside of Blender. It's a little bit odd that it's not lined up with our ground here. Let's go ahead and check the scale really quick. I think the scale is pretty good. Our character's around two meters, so not bad there. I'm uh, wondering what all this data is. The problem with you know using some kind of streamlined AI technology is even though it might get you to a specific starting point or even an endpoint, if you wanna adjust that, you have to figure out how it got there. So you can see we have all this rigging information, this rig over here, and now we have to kind of decode what it did if we wanna make any changes. So let's go ahead and take a look through our camera here. And yeah, so we have our character animated, pretty straightforward here. The rig is uh, fairly complex complex one it looks like for a character but it's looking pretty good one thing I'm noticing it didn't recreate our 3d geometry in our scene at all it's just importing the character so if you want to add anything to the shot other than our character um, and you know have that interact in 3d space then you have to recreate that geometry just in the more traditional method but Wonder Studio doesn't claim to do that so that's a uh, no big deal I would like our character to line up with the ground here where the feet are so I'll just bring that up but yeah I'm gonna select this rig too and just hide it. And our, you know, our model looks pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at our environment because I thought the lighting on our render was really good for something generative like this. So if we go to our world properties tab, you can see it's created some kind of HDRI for us, but it's more just like a gradient of colors, which is kind of interesting because I thought the reflection on the final CG render composited in was pretty impressive, but let's go ahead and take a look in our rendered form here. And it looks like we didn't get our textures imported. So I think I saw a little read me over here. Yeah, that's something that I feel like could be streamlined a little better. If it's gonna streamline everything else for us, why not just pack the textures of the characters into the file? But it looks like it has a link here for us to grab those textures. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have some character textures and here we have our beastie bot, which is what we used. Grab this guy and save it in our file. Now I will open this up and we'll select some of our character models here. You can see, okay, so we have our materials here. I think we just have to link our textures. So I think if we just go to external data, find missing files, and then go to our textures folder, we can just click on find missing files and it should, yeah, so it should, yeah, now it's importing our textures. So, you know, pretty detailed model. I think the 3D model and the lighting of the model is pretty impressive considering the automation behind it uh, and not recreating the 3D geometry. It's just used a world HDRI that is generated from the live action shot that we gave it. If we turn off transparent mode on our film. So this is the HDRI, the lighting that is on our character. And you can see it's just a gradient, which is nice, but I think something that I'd like to see is maybe a more detailed generated HDRI from the actual environment. So this is pretty cool though. I mean, it, it did a great job. So um, you might argue if it's not broken, don't fix it. But um, I think normally if I add an HDRI to my scene, I'm gonna use something with more pixel detail and something that's based on the environment a bit more. So that could be interesting, some kind of more uh, detailed HDRI that's uh, being built, but but perhaps that would increase render time or calculation time or something too much. But interesting that it's generated this HDRI for us. The lighting looks great on our character, so I'm not complaining, just something that is uh, interesting. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a nice starting point, you know, if, we wanted to add more to this. We could definitely start adjusting, you know, we could adjust the animation of things. Now, one thing that I am noticing is that our camera isn't tracked for this specific example. It's just lining up our character model to where our character would be in the scene. So that's kind of interesting. I think that would mean that we have to do a lot more work in our 3D process, but hopefully, you know, it does say on their main page here that it will track your footage, I think. So I'm not sure why it didn't track track our shot, to be honest. 
Ah, so it says camera track is coming soon. So that actually changes things when it comes to our 3D reconstruction. We can't actually add a lot to the scene. In this specific scene, we'd have to recreate a new one and track it in order to add more 3D elements to it if we wanted to do it manually. Because right now, our 3D character is tracked to the camera, but our camera isn't tracked to the live action shot. So I hope that makes sense. If you don't understand camera tracking, I'll put a link to a tutorial about that in the description below, but pretty much it's about matching the camera in your 3D scene to the movement of your camera in the live action shot. So anyways, impressive. I'm not sure what all else I would do with this without the camera tracking data. It's pretty much uh, just gonna allow me to import and maybe relight the character a bit or export different passes. But uh, yeah, still pretty impressive regardless. It's just a matter of trying to find a place for this technology in the pipeline that you already have. So let's go ahead and check out the compositing node here. I think it's created some nodes for us automatically, which is quite interesting. It's kind of a mess right now. So let's go ahead and decode some of these. So this is interesting. It's automatically created all these nodes for compositing, which uh, is kind of interesting. We have some roto data that it's created for us. I think it's a pretty simple composite. They're just all these nodes stacked on top of each other. I think we're sort of decoding this here. It's a little bit interesting. I wish there was a button that could just reorganize this for us, but okay. So it's creating a pretty basic composite for us here. It's just the data flow is kind of interesting. Okay, so this is our robot main. So we have our main view layer here. So when we render this out, this will be our render layer for the robot. And then we're overlaying this data on top of our clean plate, which uh, composites everything together. And then all of this other stuff is uh, just roto data that we can use to clean everything up. But pretty basic composite. It's a little bit, you know, they're trying to automate this and give us some control, but I would probably if you export these various passes down here, you're probably gonna end up just recreating that entire node tree in either Blender or another node compositor of your choice, or even After Effects. So, you know, even though it creates all this for you, I would just start over in that regard. It still gives you some data to work with, so um, we'll see how things develop in the future. But, uh, okay, so it gives us some compositing node setup here. In conclusion, guys, with this first test of Wonder Studio, the motion capture was really good for this basic shot. I was impressed with that. I'm not super happy that it didn't track our camera like it said it was gonna do, but uh, still impressive initial result here. The automated clean plate was pretty cool. I don't think it's gonna be something that would be used in a big movie or even an indie film, but perhaps if the CG character is considerably larger than you know your clean plate background, then you can get away with some of the edges having a little bit of those artifacts of that generative fill but uh, you know it does give you some data to work with and for something that's viewed on a small screen i think it could be a really interesting way to streamline your workflow the motion capture is probably the most impressive part of this in my opinion i do think that once they figure out the camera tracking that is going to take this to the next level because then we can have that motion tracking data inside of the computer and then theoretically you know build out more of our scene in 3d and have a lot more control on how the final shot looks like by adding new elements however but right now, really, we just can play around with maybe reanimating our character in a different way, but our character isn't actually moving through 3D space in a 3D world. So we can't actually add more elements to help composite it together within the 3D world because our camera isn't actually tracked yet. So yeah, pretty cool technology. I'll make another video testing it with some more complex shots, maybe give the algorithm something a little bit harder to track as far as the motion capture of our character. I think as these technologies continue to develop, they're gonna be a bigger part of our workflow. However, we do need to know their limitations so that we can use them in the right way within our workflows. So anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content and I'll see you next time.